Uh, so here we have graph the inequality. You might be saying we've been doing graphing inequality. So what makes this one a little special than the other ones that I have videos for? Notice it only has one variable. It doesn't have a y. This one just has x's. Remember how we talked about special equations and we gave you examples when x equals a number or y equals a number? This, because it has one variable, is also a special graph. So special graphs, remember, most of the equations and inequalities that we were dealing with had two variables. I had an x variable and I had a y variable. Well, this guy only has just one. We're still going to follow as many of the steps that we could do. So graphing, step one, pretend that you have an equal sign instead of an inequality symbol. So if we do that, we get x equals negative 1. Notice that this guy doesn't have a y. So because it doesn't have a y, we can't even solve for the specified variable of y. What does that mean? Our slope is going to be undefined. Now you have to remember the four pictures of slopes. We have positive slope, negative slope, slope of zero, and slope of undefined. Now slopes of zero were those perfect flat lines, no increase, no decrease. They had always the equation y equals a number. They didn't have an x, it just was y equals a number. And the guys that had slopes that were undefined those are the ones that were perfectly up and down. They were vertical lines. So, with no y term, we know that slope is undefined. And when slope is undefined, we know we're going to have a vertical graph. So find x, since this is solved, x is by itself, if x was not by itself, you would move or divorce to get x by itself. But once x is by itself, find x equals negative 1. Remember, this is our x axis, this is our y axis. Find x as negative 1. Boom. Right here. Okay. Normally, we would look for y's, but because there's no y's, I have to look at x. This is my intercept. It's an x-intercept, not a y-intercept, because there's no y's. This would be the point negative 1, 0. From here, we know we're going to draw a perfectly up and down. But, because it's inequality, is it going to be a solid line or is it going to be dotted? If it was an equal sign, we always do it as a solid line. But because we're doing inequalities, you have to look at the symbol. The inequality symbol is a plane greater than, so we know that this is going to be dotted. So we're going to draw a dotted line. But make sure it doesn't tilt. It has to be perfectly vertical, up and down. Like that. See how it doesn't really tilt? It's up and down. You're done with the graphing, okay? We couldn't do our traditional y equals mx plus b because there's no y's. 
Okay, so what we had to do is get x by itself and find this on the x-axis because this is known as the x-intercept and then draw perfectly up and down. Anytime that you have x equals a number, we talked about this, this would always be a vertical line. Remember, vertical means up and down. So we got this, but because it's inequality, we have to do shading. Now shading hasn't changed. Shading says, okay, now that you have the graph, you're gonna pick any point that is not on that boundary line. So you know the point that I love to use, right here. Zero, zero. Take zero, zero, plug it into the original problem not the equal. So we're going to test 0, 0 because it's not on the purple boundary line. Every time I see x, put in a set of parentheses, plug in that x is 0. Notice we don't have any y, so we can't plug in a second set of parentheses, just the one. When we distribute, we get 0 is greater than negative 1. So we asked ourselves, is that a true statement? Hmm. Alligator has already chosen zero as the bigger meal. Let's see if I'm in agreement. Would I rather have zero dollars in my pocket or would I rather owe someone a whole dollar? Yeah, I'd rather be with zero dollars than to owe someone. So alligator chose zero, I chose zero. We're in a true statement. We're in agreement. So this would be true because that's where my test point is. Test point. 0, 0, we got a true, so I put a T there. Then shade in only the true sign, okay? So that was step one, step two, step three, and now shade. Step four. There we go. We just graphed X is greater than negative one. Now, let me erase, and let's just do one that has y, so that you have some practice to show that there is a difference between x and y. So let me erase. And let's say it said y was, I don't know, less than. So let's do this guy. Still going to be on a rectangle coordinate system. I know a lot of you are probably saying, why is it on a rectangle coordinate system? Wouldn't it be this like the number line that we were doing um, in the last unit, unit one? These are the ones they want you to always graph on a rectangle coordinate system. Even though they only have one variable, you still have to do it on this coordinate system. Okay, now that I have this marked off a little bit, you know this is x, this is y. The first thing we told you to do to do graphing is pretend that you have an equal sign. So y equals 2. Then you would get y by itself. Unlike the other question, we didn't have y's, this one does have a y. Notice it's by itself. Okay, now that y is by itself, that's step two. Step three is, what is the constant? What is the x coefficient? Because that gives us the slope and the y-intercept. Well, this is a constant. So this is your y-intercept. Y-intercept is an ordered pair. Zero, comma, whatever the number is. Notice, no x, so no coefficient. But because we have a y, we will say our slope is zero. Why not undefined? Because we talked about this before. We said this is the same thing as saying zero x 
plus 2. Because 0 times x is 0, and 0 plus 2 is 2. So the only way for the x to disappear is that the slope, the coefficient, had to be 0. So since you didn't see it, it's technically a 0. Now that I know my slope, and I know my y-intercept, let us plot 0, 2. How do I plot 0, 2? Remember, 0 for the x is right here. And then the 2 tells me to go up 2 units. Remember, y-intercept on y-axis. Now some of you will remember Oh, remember the four pictures? When slope is zero, it's that perfectly flat horizontal line. So we can easily just draw a line that goes flat. But the question is, do we draw it as a solid or dot it? We're going to graph it as a dotted line. See how it's not increasing or decreasing, it's perfectly flat? If you didn't know that, you could take the slope and put it as a fraction. 0 over 1, I told you any whole number, you can put it over 1. So the 0 tells us don't go up, don't go down. But the 1 says go to the right. So from here, don't go up, don't go down. Can't go up, can't go down, but we can go over to the right one spot. Can't go up, can't go down, but you can go over one spot to the right. So if you graphed it that way, you get the same flat line. Most of you will remember the four pictures. Almost done. We have to do some shading. So to shade, you're going to pick any point that is not on the black boundary line. So, you know I love my zero, zero. So let's test zero, zero. So every time I see y, plug in a zero. Ask yourself, is that a true or a false statement? Alligator already chose his two. Hmm, would I rather have zero dollars or two dollars? I'd rather have two dollars, so we're in agreement. This is true. So where my test point is, put a T. And since I only can shade in the T region, I'm going to shade everything that's below. So we showed you one where we have Y. And we showed you one where we only have x in the uh, inequality problem. 